Um, yes, I have a hard time remembering things. Last time I was at the mall, I went to the calendar store, though. It just came to me. I was like, oh, man, I should go to the calendar store, you know? Because then I could, like, make a note of all the appointments that I have. I'm like, maybe that'll help. And I ended up seeing this one calendar. Thanks, dude. Krish is awesome. Give it up for Krish. That's how important my joke was. <laughs> <laughs> they should make these wider so I can just put the shot right in there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I went to the calendar store. I saw this one calendar that was painted by people that have no hands. <laughs> They're called foot painters because they actually beat the odds and they learn how to paint with their feet. And, you know, it was like every month, you know, they're all a different different pictures, some were watercolor, some were oil, but it was really starting to like blow my mind. I was like, you cannot tell these people didn't have hands. I'm just like, wow, this is amazing. And I was about to buy the calendar, but then I looked to my right, and I saw this calendar that was painted by people that have hands. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, it's way better. <laughs> So, uh, I have Asperger's, which, you know, no big deal. You don't have to clap. It's nothing to clap about. <laughs> it's basically just a highly pretentious form of autism. It's like being a sociopath that doesn't know how to charm people. <laughs> it's hipster autism. That just means if anyone misuses the word ironic and I don't get to correct them, I could have a meltdown. <laughs> I have very bad coping skills. Unless it's something like really fantastical. Like I feel like if I was trapped in a dungeon in the 1600s and all I had to eat and drink was bread and water, I would be cool with that. Because then I could just pretend I was at the Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> and then my food was just taking a really long time. It would be cool, though, because the bathroom would be right next to the table. <laughs> I'm a really autistic driver. Sometimes I just take pictures of people's vanity plates. And if it's, like, a really funny one... I'll ignore almost every traffic law until the lighting is perfect. <laughs> I didn't start driving until I was 32. And then the first time I ever got pulled over by a cop, I was like, I wonder if I just tell this dude I have Asperger's if he'll let me go. And he did. And then I did it again. The second time I got pulled over it was only like a month later. And there was two cops and they both let me go. I had no idea autistic privilege was even a thing. <laughs> Which is kind of cool, I guess, but now I've got autistic guilt. <laughs> I just keep thinking of all the poor people who've been deprived of eye contact because of people like me. <laughs> Sometimes I think people don't like me, and I don't even know why. I've got this, like, Facebook message. It's not really a message. There's this other comedian on Facebook, and he posted this really sweet joke back in the day about how you could buy clothing brand new but still with rips in it I'm not going to tell a joke I feel like that would be disrespectful but I commented on it I was like well you know the quality shit still has the rips reinforced on the back to which he responded to someone I have only met in person one time nearly 2.5 years ago and spoke with for less than 10 minutes you sure do have a lot of opinions about my innocuous musings Dan Myron Handelman <laughs> Who's an English major. So I was just like, thank you. <laughs> he kept going. He said, what I'm saying, Dan, whatever you're calling yourself this month, is that I give less than zero shits about your opinion. I look forward to another unsolicited <laughs> message from you about how to write comedy bits. I have never seen you perform stand-up. Why would I be a go-to person for advice when I couldn't pick you out of a police lineup? I thought that was really weird because like a paragraph ago he remembered the exact amount of time that he passed his initial meeting. <laughs> and the duration of time that we talked. Like, I feel like I'm the one that shouldn't be able to pick him out of a police lineup. 
said, I have nothing to offer you. I don't know you. And based on, get ready for this, <laughs> your inability to understand boundaries, <laughs> I don't really care to. I can't wait to not see you for another two years. And, you know, that's cool. I mean... <laughs> That is a little long-winded way of telling somebody that they can't afford the high-quality rip shit, though. <laughs> I will say that. Yeah, I don't know. Einstein was supposedly autistic. I don't know if that's true. They always try to say that shit about people after they die. But Einstein... <laughs> Einstein had this really crazy quote back in the day. He said, I don't know. No, he said, I know not. What weapons will be used to fight in World War III? But World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. I don't know if he was autistic. That is a very autistic thing to say, though, because I feel like who in their right mind would store a bomb shelter, stack a bomb shelter with sticks and stones? <laughs> I think World War IV will be fought with non-perishable canned goods. <laughs> Autism. I don't want to be like Midget comic and just talk about autism the whole time. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> Anyone ever use private browsing on the internet? This gentleman, I'm doing crowd work. This is crowd work. Okay, sir, thank you. <laughs> uh, private browsing makes it so that no one can see anything that you're doing online unless they're really smart because it doesn't get saved in your internet history, which I think would be really sweet if they didn't try to shame you for using it. Like, if I was gonna come out with a symbol for private browsing, I would make it something sweet, like an envelope with classified stamped on it. <laughs> like, who do they have working in these, like, in the art department, you know? I don't work for Firefox, and they decided to go with the Phantom of the Opera mask. <laughs> Which I feel like if you can't even surf the internet like a normal person, the last thing you want to be compared to is a deranged psychopath that lives in the shadows. It's a flasher with a trench coat. It is. You just spoiled my joke, but thank you. <laughs> it's the Neighborhood Watch logo. Why not just have him holding the trench? You knew where it was going to go. How about this? Why don't they just make it a pair of glowing eyes looking through a window from across the street? It's clearly not about privacy anymore. I wish I was recording this. God, you guys are amazing. You give me too much credit. I feel bad for the mom and pop adult video stores that go out of business because of the internet. Like they were just as good. You go with they Sometimes I used to think they were just a mirage off the side of the freeway that you couldn't really get to because there would just be a Hardee's once you pulled in. <laughs> but the adult video, so you go in there, it's like, hey, Mrs. Henderson, Dan, I just got Big Booty 6 in again. Hold on, let me find my box cutter. And you're like, oh, you got it, Mrs. H. And then whatever you bought, you would leave the building discreetly that was covered in neon lights bent into the shapes of boobs and triple X's <laughs> while wearing a trench coat and a Phantom of the Opera mask. <laughs> I only was actually in an adult video store once, and it wasn't even to get porn. I was going to get some nitrous oxide, which they sell it. I don't know why you would go to a restaurant <laughs> supplier for that, but you can buy that there. And I wasn't even going to get get the nitrous oxide to do whippets. I was gonna bake a cake that a stripper was gonna come out of <laughs> and hopefully do whippets with me. <laughs> I'm actually just kidding about that too. I don't go to the strip club because uh, I just go to Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. <laughs> which is basically the same thing except they do something productive with your $10. <laughs> You just gotta make sure you don't go during happy hour because when I went to the Lady Jane's haircuts for men, for, like as soon as I went in there, the place was jumping. Like Panama started playing. She just threw me down on the chair, started washing my hair. It was great. But then as soon as the song was over, Bad Girlfriend by Nickelback came on. So she just got up and walked away. Started cutting some other dude's hair. I had to pair like five more times to finish my haircut. <laughs> That's the joke about the parallels you draw between the strip club and the Lady Jane's haircuts for men. Thank you. I mean, thank you for 
All right, I'm still going. <laughs> but thank you. Um, yeah, I don't know. I uh, I want to move. Does that make me naive? Like that I would fall for something like that? I used to get really paranoid that I was naive, and then I just started carrying around mouse traps in my jacket pockets. <laughs> That way, if anyone ever tries to reach into my pocket, they're going to think they're going to get my wallet. But no, no, no. <laughs> they get Velveeta all over their hands. <laughs> and then I'm like, what's wrong? You don't like liquid gold? <laughs> that part was new. I want to move to L.A., but I don't want to go for comedy because I feel like everyone that goes out to L.A. for comedy is just trying to be an actor. That's stupid. I feel like that's just a whole pointless extra step in making yourself homeless. <laughs> Plus, I don't have a lot of money. I don't really want to live in a bad neighborhood. And uh, I don't know if any of this is true because I, uh, I didn't make it up. But there's a lot of urban legends about the, cro the drug cartels. This is kind of dark, but I heard sometimes the drug cartels will stuff babies with cocaine. That way, if they get stopped at the border, nothing looks suspicious. You would just think it was a bunch of regular dudes driving around with a briefcase full of babies. <laughs> I would like to move to California, though. I just feel like you'd meet so many celebrities. Like, I would love to meet Quentin Tarantino. I think that would be awesome. I just want to pitch my movie idea to him. I think Quentin Tarantino should direct a movie version of uh, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Because there's already plenty of N-bombs in that book. He wouldn't have to change a thing. <laughs> I mean, come on, someone's got to prove Mark Twain wasn't racist. <laughs> Might as well be Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> I wish Nicolas Cage would be in a Quentin Tarantino movie. I don't know why I'm the first person to think of that. <laughs> I don't even care about the movie. I just like Nicolas Cage's promotional interviews. He'd go up there, he'd be like, hey, you know, Quentin Tarantino is a genius. <laughs> when I was reading for the part, I remember it was like every word he committed to the page was swimming in an ocean of visceral intention. <laughs> My only question was, do I pronounce this word with an A or an R? <laughs> you thought that was hilarious. I'm Dan Myron Handelman. Thank you guys. Give it up for Trish, Mary Santora, Tim Cornett's here. Could give me a ride, but that's cool. He had to work. Show moving right along. And next time I come into the stage, one of my absolute favorites.